Okay, today is super exciting because if you can't tell, what I have here on the left is Blender. And what I have here on the right is a Bevy application. And this is a Blender coin, which I got from Kenny. This is also part of their platformer series down here. I just needed some models. <laughs> so this coin on the right-hand side in our Bevy app is rotating based on some components we've added inside of Blender to this coin. So I have this coin component somewhere in my code. I'm controlling whether that is applied to a given mesh inside of Blender. And then I'm taking that and we are running it inside of our Bevy application. I have a system attaching to any entity that has a coin component. And in this case, I'm rotating it because that's what coins tend to do in 3D video games. I'm gonna take a second to introduce the project first, and then we're gonna come back and take a look at this code and what's actually going on here. So if you're interested in this workflow, which is basically a workflow that takes Bevy components and all of the type registration and reflection information that is present inside of your Bevy app, takes that, puts it inside of Blender for you to manipulate and use and apply to different meshes, and then re-exports that GLTF file back to Bevy so that you can actually run and instantiate levels both dynamically and statically, which is what we saw. This is Bevy Blender Components Workflow. And there's a couple of crates in here, Bevy GLTF Blueprints, Components, Save Load, and Registry Export. And the TLDR sales pitch is, why don't you use Blender as the Bevy Editor UI, since Bevy doesn't currently have an Editor UI. Now this plugin is the work of this person, Krabicado, and they've been posting updates for a little bit now. I don't know exactly how long they've been working on it, but the first official release is now out on crates.io, so it's available for you to bring in and use. From that toot on Mastodon, they link to two different pages. One is Bevy Registry Export, which is very important, a critical part of this workflow, and the other is the release page. Now these two zip files right here are very interesting. One contains some UI that works inside of Blender, so they're both Blender add-ons. You have Bevy Components and GLTF Auto Export. Bevy Components, we'll take a look at in a second, shows a UI for applying and modifying the values of components to your meshes inside of Blender. And GLTF Auto Export sets up some automatic um, features and properties for doing automatic exporting whenever you save inside of Blender. I believe they're trying to work on some hot reloading for various features. I haven't worked with any of that yet, so I don't know how much is implemented, but they do mention some real-time editable kind of functionality that they're looking for, as well as geometry nodes from Blender, which are both very cool. And I hope that they find the energy to do that after taking a bit of a break for getting this release out. So let's go into what this workflow actually looks like. On the right-hand side here, we have a running Bevy app. We've got a light pointed in here that I spawned inside of the actual Bevy app itself. So that is just some random code in my setup function. You can see a point light bundle right here and a camera 3D bundle right here. You can do advanced things like set up your cameras inside of this Blender plugin. I didn't do that today. This is just my first run. I'm very excited about this. And then we've used Bevy Asset Loader to pull in that exported GLTF file. We've spawned that scene and that scene has the components for each of the meshes in our level or what I'm treating as a level anyway. And that is the coin component here and this rotation system. There are a couple of different make this a bit bigger while we're talking about it. There are a couple of different dependencies. There's obviously Bevy 0.12 is the currently supported release. Bevy Asset Loader is what I'm using to load in the GLTF files in an ergonomic way, and then only spawn this, you know, when we're actually ready to spawn the GLTF file that we've loaded. We're using Bevy GLTF components and Bevy Registry Export. The first step of this workflow is Bevy Registry Export. We set up this Export Registry plugin as part of our application. And then we also need to make sure that anything that we want to use inside of Blender is registered. So in this case, I'm using a manual register type with coin. And it's very important that coin has reflect here because that's how we get that information inside of Blender. So here's a component. It's got no information on it. It's just a marker component. It derives component, it reflects component. It derives reflect, debug, and default. Default, I believe, is required by reflect. But this is kind of the minimal setup for getting a component to do the thing. <laughs> now, because we've set up this export registry plugin, and because we've registered a type, 
that puts out this registry.json file in our assets folder every time we run our Bevy app. So if we make any changes, we need to update the registry, we run the Bevy app, we get that JSON file. And inside of that JSON file, if you look for, in this example, coin, we're gonna see the name of the crate, YT uh, Bevy Blender, which is what I've named this directory, colon, colon, coin. We've got the short name of coin, the title, bunch of information about what it is. It is a component, for example. It is not a resource, which are both bevyisms, and it is a struct. Now this is true for a whole bunch of other information. This is a very sort of large file containing all of the types, I believe it's all of the types actually, that are in our type registry that were uh, applicable to be exported like this. So we get this registry.json file, right? And with that registry.json file, we can go into Blender, we can start creating some scene. If you go into preferences, you do need to install that Bevy Components plugin that I talked about earlier from that zip file, as well as I've installed the GLTF Auto Export plugin, which is from the same project. If you look at the Blender UI here, I don't know that I can actually make the Blender UI any bigger. I'll have to figure that out for future videos. But if you click a little arrow that's here, you end up getting this little sidebar. This little sidebar allows you to click on Bevy Components, which is vertically written, so tilt your head 90 degrees to read that. That pops up this menu. So you can see I've got coin selected here. And the thing that you really need to do is click this browse for, uh, I forget what this says exactly, but it's basically like open the file browser to go get that registry.json schema file. So we put that here and then we click reload registry. That will take this registry.json file and give us, if you click this drop down in the components, this giant list of all of the stuff that was in our Bevy app. So this is all of the types that we can use here. Uh, in this case, I believe it's all of the components. This is everything we can apply to our mesh. So let's say I wanted to add an AABB bounding box uh, to this coin. You know, obviously you wanna collect coins, you can do that. I select AABB, I click add. It gives me the different values that I would need to set up for the AABB bounding box. And you can also see this coin marker component that I've already added. So I don't need the bounding box right now. That's not what I'm doing. So I'm gonna delete that. There's a couple of other functionalities. You can copy and paste uh, sets of components across different uh, meshes and stuff like that. There's a whole blueprints system for dealing with sort of collections of meshes inside of Blender and things like that. All very cool stuff, but the core functionality, you take that registry file, you put it here, you get a list of the components, you set those components here, you can set any of the data on those components, and then this coin now has that component on it. So if you have the GLTF auto export, it will export when you save, or you can you know, go in here and do file export GLTF, either GLTF auto export, or if you wanna be manual about it, GLTF. In this case, I've got this level.glb, and now we're ready to load this into our Bevy app. So we exported all the type information into the JSON file, the JSON file got loaded into Blender. That allowed us to attach our components with the values that we wanted to give them, do our level editing and whatnot. This is a very simple level, but you can imagine something a little bit more complicated. Then we come back into Bevy. We take the Bevy GLTF components crate, add that plugin. In this case, I've also added Bevy asset loader, which will load our GLTF file, in this case, a GLB file, the so same thing. And then when that loads, we'll run the start level system. We also have this rotate coin system that Rotate coin system is querying for any entity with a coin component and getting the transform for that. So you can see that we're transforming the Y rotation. That's how this coin is actually getting rotated around. Bevy asset loader loads in this level.glb from our assets file. It creates a handle to a GLTF. Our start level, so after everything loads, start level grabs those level assets, grabs all the models that are the GLTF that Bevy knows about spawns in a point light bundle because I didn't set up any lights inside of Blender, so I had to set that up inside of my Bevy app. I didn't set up a camera inside of Blender, so I set that up inside of my Bevy app. I get, based on the handle for the level, the models, that goes into my GLTF. If we look at the types here, it's a shared reference to a GLTF. We use that to spawn the scene bundle. In this case, it's scene zero. We gave it a name, level one, and that's it. The coin that gets spawned as a result of loading in that GLTF file that we got from Blender with the additional metadata is now spinning because it has the Bevy component on it already. We don't need to write our additional system to go try to target some 
mesh as it's loaded and attach some component to it or do something like that, which you totally can do, but is a little bit more complicated. So overall, this is super exciting because it is a round trip workflow for working with Bevy and Blender in a way that seems more productive. I really appreciate the piece of Bevy that lets me write any code and target any GLTF mesh and do things like that. But if I'm building large levels, I want a level editor and using Blender as that level editor is a really powerful tool. It's a really powerful suite of tools for building out both the way things look, the way things are placed and so on and so forth. Again, this was my first time running through all of this today. So I hope I've inspired you to take a look. I will say the documentation isn't the best right now. It is the first release. I expect that to get better over time. Maybe if you're interested in this, you can help write some of that documentation to help further people down the line. I would say if you're not quite familiar with Bevy yet, it may be a little harder for you to get set up with this right now. It is a very exciting workflow if you do know Bevy and you don't really need to know Blender that well. But if you have some experience in both areas, this should be something that you can get set up and start using. One thing I will note is that I found that I needed to uh, reload the registry file or actually you know, close and restart Blender if I change the registry file, which isn't terrible, especially for a very first release, but something to keep in mind. If you don't see things popping up, it may be because something got cached somewhere along the way. I'm not really sure. So finally, very excited about this. I feel much more like building 3D games in Bevy is a little bit more approachable than it used to be because I feel like I have a level editor now, whereas before I don't really know what I would have used other than procedural generation, which would have worked, but isn't applicable to every scenario. So very exciting. Hope you enjoyed this. Go take a look. I'll leave a link in the description to the project. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.